Hello, I'm Joe Battle and I'm the Executive Director of the James A. Haley Veterans Hospital and Clinics in Tampa, Florida, and you're watching Tampa Bay Community Network. Hi, I'm Bill Hodges, and this is Spotlight on Government. And if you're a veteran, the family of a veteran, you want to watch this program because I have Joe Battle, who is the director of the James A. Haley Veterans Hospital here in Tampa with me, and we're going to be talking about the benefits and the things you can get by going to the VA. Joe, so happy to have you on the show. Thank you, Bill. Thanks for having me today. You, you had me as a guest for a week not very long ago, about three weeks ago. Yes, sir. And I was thoroughly amazed at the quality of care. And I guess I shouldn't be, but the quality of care that I received over this whole period of time, which is about five weeks now with the problems I've had with my leg. Yes, sir. Has been outstanding. Great. You know, that's what we strive for every day, Bill, is to make sure everybody has a great experience uh, when they come to the facility and get the care that they need and have earned and, and deserve. Well, you know, a lot of people don't understand quite how the VA works, and I think maybe we ought to talk about eligibility a little bit. Okay. So would you give us just an outline and understand that this is a complex question, and there's a lot of things, so there's an eligibility officer to actually get on the phone, right? Yes, sir. Uh, we have eligibility officers at the hospital. And uh, if a person's interested in using VA care and you are a person who have served in the military, as long as you have a, a DD-214, which is a discharge paper, and an honorable discharge or a general discharge or better, then come in and let us uh, run your numbers and see if you're eligible for VA care. If you have a service-connected disability from the VA, uh, you would, auto you would all automatically be eligible for VA care. And once you get eligible, they give you a card, and then they give you a primary care doctor. Mine's Dr. Carrico, and boy, she's great. She's just outstanding. Yeah. And, it, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank the two people that work with her. In fact, there's sure. more than that. Uh, Jennifer Stasio and Marlene Bowen yes. are her two nurses that primarily, there's several others, right. but those are the two I interface with a lot. Well, great. And, well, I'm glad uh, Glad she's doing a great job for you. Uh, she's actually a veteran herself. And, she is, uh, Air Force. Air and she's Force. married to an Army colonel. That's right. So, uh, you know, about 40% uh, about of our employees are veterans. So, Is that right, 40? Yeah, about 40%, yeah. Gee, I thought they all were. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, in the special medical field, there aren't, believe it or not, aren't enough veterans to fill them all. So we want people to get... Uh, Great customer service, not just great quality health care, but also great customer service. One of the things that I particularly think is exciting about this VA center is you're co-located right across the street from USF's medical school. Oh, that's right. Uh, you know, we are medically affiliated with the University of South Florida. Uh, actually, uh, when that med school started, uh, the VA helped found that med school originally. And uh, so we're very proud to have that affiliation. It's one of the larger ones in the country. We actually have 210 residents that uh, come through our hospital from the med school every year. My primary care doctor was from the med school. Yes. When I was in the hospital, Dr. Guerrera, mm -hmm. Lucy Guerrera, and she is dean of internal medicine over there, or she has a title similar to that. This lady was outstanding. She not only saw me when I was in the hospital, when I came back from urgent care, a couple of follow-ups, she made it a point to come down and see me. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Glad and you're getting the care you need. There is so many things that I'd like to talk about here. That until you get involved with it, you're going to see all kind of things all over the news about this hospital or this person didn't get this or didn't get that. I've been there for almost 10 years now, and I have never had them treat me with less than quality respect. Good. Uh, Good. 
even to the extent where I pull up and they take my car and they go park it and I walk in the building. Yes, sir. We have valet parking there uh, for those that need it, and I'm glad you, you afford yourself of it. Uh, uh, sometimes parking gets a little tight at the hospital, and uh, we're working to improve that. Uh, but uh, uh, we, we want to make sure that people can get in and get out and get their appointments. Well, the veterans population you serve seems to, and it saddens me, it really does. Anybody that talks about going off to war and takes it lightly ought to come and spend some time at this hospital because I'm seeing young people. When I first started going there, they were all my age, old duffers. Yes, sir. But now I'm seeing so many young people. Uh, we, uh, you know, we do have a lot of younger people in the hospital. You know, for the first time in many years, the average age of a veteran in, in the VA system is getting younger, not older. Um, and that's a reflection of 10 years of war. And, uh, you know, we're seeing uh, more and more younger folks in the hospital. Uh, we also do a number of active duty military at the hospital, too. Uh, we have a close relationship with Central Command and Special Operations Command. And some of those people you see uh, may be actually an active duty service person um, because we have 20 to 30 of uh, people in the hospital at any time uh, from there. Let's talk about the hospital itself. Now, I was in a four bed ward, which I'd never been in before. But the, the people on 5 South, the nurses, the, even the people in the housekeeping staff made it feel like home to me. They were so good in the way they took care of me, the care they gave to me, just the fact they cared and you could see it in everything they did. Well, I'm really glad to hear that because that's, that's the experience we want you to have uh, when you're there. Although I have to be honest with you, I'm not satisfied with those four bedroom units. Uh, I, I, I believe all our veterans should have private rooms when they come to the hospital and rooms for, uh, you know, if the loved one wants to stay with you overnight and that sort of thing. Congress listened. And, well, <laughs> actually they did. Uh, we're actually going to build a new bed tower at the hospital. Is that right? That's right. It is uh, going to be uh, 96 uh, beds for acute medicine and surgery, uh, which is, would have been where you were staying when you were here. Uh, and also 40 new intensive care unit beds will be in this new bed tower. And actually this week I've been working with the Army Corps of Engineers uh, on that uh, project. Uh, they're actually going to build it for us. And uh, we should, we're expecting to have that project awarded uh, by, before the end of this year. Really? And will it be at the main hospital? It or will be, another, it will be at the main hospital. Uh, there, you know, you were talking about the, the med school a while ago. We actually have a bridge across Bruce B. Downs yes. that goes from the med school to the hospital. So where that bridge comes across the road is where the new bed tower is going to go. Oh, right there. Right there. And take up some of that parking lot. Uh, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> but uh, we'll compensate for that in some fashion. Well, you know, you've built the new parking garage. Yes, sir. And, and by the way, I don't know what the procedure is. But if you have a little bit of spare time, you're retired, there are people who volunteer to drive golf carts back and forth yes. from the tower back to the various places within the facility. That, that's correct. We have golf carts running from the uh, garage to, to the front door, actually, to either the polytrauma door or the uh, front door of the hospital. And uh, we do that because, you know, and this is Florida and it gets hot and humid and veteran, a lot of our veterans can't walk very far. So we provide that in addition to the valet. Uh, and, you know, so we're, we're really happy we're able to do that. That uh, physical therapy, the trauma center and that over there yes. is outstanding. While I was in the hospital, Chris Kroger, Kroger came up from there, brought me a walker, Brand yeah. new one. Yeah. Made sure it was adjusted, put a belt on me, and we went out and walked around the hall. Good. For me to be able to use it. Yeah. And, uh, and then he came back several times to make sure that I was using it. Well, good. That, because, uh, we, we need, you know, we need folks to be compliant, uh, with what we want them to do because it actually helps you heal faster. Well, you know, uh, Joe Kennedy down in, uh, prosthetics. Yes, sir. Another fine gentleman mm -hmm. who fit the, the, uh, stockings that I had to have in order to keep the swelling down. Yes, sir. Uh, sent me an email message this morning asking if they were still all right because he'd seen where the doctor yesterday had said, maybe I need a smaller one. Okay. Uh, that kind of follow-up, 
You yeah. just don't see the civilian world. I'm sorry. Well, you know, one of the things we try to uh, do uh, that's a little different than the private sector is we believe in uh, whole health and we believe in continuity of care. And, we, and if we do those things and do preventative health with you, then uh, uh, our, our data and information shows that uh, you'll stay healthier and you won't have to come uh, be in the hospital or come see us as often. We, you know, we want you to come see us when you need to, but uh, <laughs> our goal is where you don't have to come, come anymore, all, than right. come, and come if you don't have to. Has your medical care evolved with the changing needs of the veterans? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, you know, in so many ways, but to give you two or three examples, you know, one is, um, uh, you know, the way uh, the wars over the last few years have been fought uh, changed, has changed how we do things. Uh, uh, the signature wound of the current wars is uh, uh, explosions. IEDs. Uh, IEDs and that sort of thing. And about one in four uh, veter uh, veterans are active duty coming back from these deployments in Afghanistan, Iraq, and whatnot. About one in four have a, a uh, at least a mild version of traumatic brain injury. And uh, that's a signature wound of this war, so we're doing a lot of things with that. I assume that works well in, with PS PTSD PS and that. That's a common uh, that common. Uh, uh, diagnosis that goes along with that and uh, so so it, the way we treat people is changing a lot and we're very fortunate here in the Tampa area because James Haley is one of the five VA polytrauma rehab hospitals for the VA in the country and actually we're the largest rehabilitation hospital in the United States most people don't know that really really and uh, largest military or just largest per se? largest uh, all uh, per se, uh, okay. not just the federal government. Okay, and uh, so we're very happy. You know, we're very happy with our mission to be able to do that. But it also allows us to take care of people in very special ways. Uh, but but that's some of the things. But coming back to veteran population as a whole, uh, we just started using a Da Vinci robot for surgery a couple of months ago. Really. Oh, yes. And uh, we just installed a, a brand new MRI for the women's clinic. We have, you know, women veterans are our largest growing demographic. We're up to nearly 10% of our veterans are women now. In the military, it's over 20, and eventually that will we'll have over 20%. Sure. Uh, so, you know, we're providing spe uh, the things that they need. Uh, and there are special needs. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we're putting in uh, True Beam. Uh, uh, linear accelerators for cancer care, putting in a cyber knife, and uh, you know this is the top of the line technology that's going into the hospital. You're doing so many really neat things. Yesterday, I had an opportunity to either come into the VA and see Dr. Carrico, or she said there was a pilot program yes. where she could do a video exam. Right of my leg yep. to see how it was proceeding. Yes. And I said, well, let's try it. So yes. 11 o'clock yesterday morning, I was able to set up a camera, uh, actually my phone, actually my tablet, but set it up. Yep. My wife became camera person, as she does here. <laughs> and then we were able to go ahead and have an appointment with the doctor. She could see it all. And as a result, she said, I want you to go to dermatology. So I still had to drive up. Right. But it could have been two appointments up here rather than, than one. one. Or maybe none if, if it looked a different way. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things we're really big into right now uh, at the VA is same day services. And so what that means is if you call in or, or use your My Healthy Vet or email in or, Let's talk about or, that te too. or text in, you know, if you contact us and have a need, uh, you know, it's our goal to respond to you that same day and start working your issue, whatever it is. Now, that may be a same-day appointment. That may be filling a prescription. It might be a video uh, exam or a phone, uh, phone exam or whatever. But we're going to start addressing your needs that day, and we're doing that for primary care and mental health uh, right now. So you actually experienced one of the newer modalities that we're using 
to actually uh, make that happen. Well, all of the young people, I, I emphasize young people, are into phones and iPhones and, yeah. and Androids and all these different mm -hmm. things. And, and actually, I run three computers at the house. We have two tablets and two phones. So we're, we stay fairly up on it. Sure. But it was kind of fun to get involved in this new technology yes. for the medical profession. Yes, it, it, it's, uh, it's kind of new. Uh, actually, the technology's been around. We're just using it a new way. <laughs> new way, that's true. Uh, and we're very excited about that because it allows us to meet your needs in a way that's easier for you. You know, we, we, you know, we want to be as user-friendly for you as we can be. You this, know, is, this is sort of like a secure Skype. Yeah, it is. Just so those of you who are familiar with Skype or with the iPhone, they have, what is that, iPhone messaging yeah. back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very similar thing, only it's a very secure way so that nobody can see what's going on besides the parties that That's are right. in the room. That's right. And, you know, with our, you, you mentioned my healthy vet, you know, uh, uh, people that sign up and use my healthy vet that are customers of, of our facility, you know, you can go in there, look at your medical record, order your prescriptions, talk to your doctor. There's all kind of things you can do. So we're, we're, we're making uh, opportunities to uh, allow people to access us uh, better all the time. Explain that more so people will really understand what My Healthy Vet does for them. Sure. Well, My Healthy Vet is an electronic uh, platform. Uh, you know, you go through a website on the Internet. And uh, you, you have to sign up for it, and we have to uh, give you an authentication code to get into it. But once you do, uh, then you have access to your medical record. Uh, you have access to your prescriptions, order and refills. You can talk to your doctor, have, have that private conversation, uh, and, and do all sorts of things uh, with it that, that makes the interactions uh, a lot better for you. And, you know, you're not having to call the hospital on the phone and try to run somebody down to find out something. You can go in there and most of the time get the answer you need. I think one of the important things, though, is that you can go into the web and sign up for it. Yes. But you actually have to come into the hospital and verify you are who you say you that's are. That's correct. Everything is extremely secure. And that's, yes. sometimes it gets to a point where it's a little, kind of a pain. Yeah. But the fact is, you're not missing anything if you do it that way. No, you're not missing anything. The, the beauty of my healthy vet was I had a request to my doctor that I sent in last night at about 11 o'clock. At 8 o'clock this morning, I had a report back from her and a suggestion to call a particular number. In fact, they called me to yeah. make the appointment. Yeah. So it... It was better than my calling and leaving a message. Of course, there isn't any answering machine, so right. I couldn't leave one there. Right. But when I've needed new medications, I've had any questions that weren't emergency, I could go to them, and within 24 hours, sometimes it's as much as 48, depending on if it's a weekend or something like that, but they really do come back with some great information. Sure, absolutely, and that's the point of it, is to make sure you, you are a participant in your health care. You can go back and look at your prescriptions, yep. see which ones you're on, how long you've been on them, which ones you need to have refilled. That's correct. And let your doctor know that if you yep. don't have a primary care appointment set up. Right. So there are a lot of things one can do on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's very uh, user friendly. And uh, another thing that the VA has done over the last year is uh, uh, our previous secretary, when he, he came in, uh, uh, Secretary McDonald, he noted that we had 900 and different websites uh, on how people would access different parts of <laughs> VA uh, stuff, and we, he found that to be too governmental. And so he actually condensed all those different websites into one website called vets.gov. And you can go into vets.gov and hit uh, and access whether it's VA healthcare, benefits, cemetery system, whatever it is, you can go into vets.gov and access those points now through one website. I, I noticed that when I was looking at my disability claims. Yes, sir. Uh, that there's really good information on that yeah. in that vets.gov website. Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, and uh, that website's going to continue to get better and better. Uh, 
uh, they, that was one of those. They, they didn't wait till they had everything done before they launched it, so they continued to add more to it all the time. Let's talk about something else. Sure. Patient advocates. Okay. I think that is one of the neatest things at the VA. If you get confused, if you don't have a problem with your doctor, if there's anything goes wrong, you can call and get a hold of one of these people called patient advocates, yes. correct? And yes. they're employees of the hospital? Yes, the patient advocates are employees of the hospital. Uh, they're actually my representatives uh, in, in working with our veterans and our patients. Uh, and if they have a, a need or a concern or something didn't go right, uh, they're there to be an advocate for the veteran. It seems to me that you are doing more outreach than I've seen in past years. Now, Karen Collins, your public information officer, has done an outstanding job, and I want to thank her so much for sure. getting you on the program, although she jumped at the chance to have you on, and I'm, I was so excited, I called our producer right away and said, call, get this done. Uh -huh. And then Megan, one of her assistants, came over with her today, and I want to appreciate that. Yes. Are you spending more time going out into the public, letting people know how wonderful this place is? Well, you know, uh, I, I do that. Uh, I have a belief that, uh, you know, we, should, we, are, we are part of the community. Actually, I don't believe it, I know it. We're part of the community. And it, I feel it's our job to get out there and let the community know what all's going on at the hospital. I mean, uh, we're, we're, you know, we don't want to consider ourselves an island over there on Bruce B. Downs, you know, so we're doing all kind of things. I've been the director now a little over a year and a half, and, you know, if people invite me to their events, I make every effort to go to those unless I'm out of town or something like that. And so uh, shows like this, uh, I jump at because I want people to know what, what we're doing at the hospital, what's going on, and who we're taking care of because, you know, our way of life, everything we do in, in this country is because our veterans put it on the line uh, to protect that way of life. And, you, know, you know, and that's an interesting thing. I have out in Sun City Center in our community association, I have a veterans photo project. Sure. Where we're actually taking pictures of all the vets who are in our association. And we have about 11,000 people in the association, so we're guessing there's two, three thousand vets in that group of people because yeah. of our age group, if nothing else. Yeah. And I find so many of them just, well, I, I was just a clerk. I was just in supply. I didn't do anything to become a hero. I don't deserve all these things. Would you dispel that for me? Oh, absolutely. I do it every you know, day, but will you do it? Uh, from my view, anybody that put on the uniform is a hero because you said you were willing to die for your country. You put you, your a name on you a You put your check. name on a piece of paper saying, I'm willing to die for my country. It doesn't matter what job in the military you had. Uh, they were all equally important. And, you know, people do them different ways. But, but the truth is, you know, what you get at the VA, if you're a veteran, is you is a benef benefit you earn. We're not, we're not a handout. We're not giving anything away. This isn't a social program. Amen. This is part of the paycheck you know, for you putting it on the line to protect our country and our way of life. And anybody that says different, I will bristle and, <laughs> and defend, de defend this to the hilt. And it, so anybody who served should contact the VA and see what their eligibility is, correct? Absolutely. You know, um, we have between two and 300,000 veterans in our four county catchment area, which is Hillsborough, Polk, Hernando, and Pasco counties. Uh, and, you know, we have uh, over 100,000 enrolled at the hospital, over 93,000 actually came through the doors last year. Uh, and so uh, we, my, you know, people ask me what my strategic goal is, Bill, and for me it's very simple. I want every veteran who is eligible for VA health care to come in and get it from us because it's, you earned it. It was part of the paycheck. And if you don't, if you don't collect it, you're like saying, I don't want part of my paycheck. And not, not, too many, not too many people really do that. That's not a good thing. Yeah, not too many people do that. So they should think of it in that way. And I've heard some veterans say, oh, well, I got my own insurance, and I don't want to deprive someone else from uh, getting the care. 
no one is depriving anybody because we, we, we will have the resources to take care of everybody. In my 10 years coming up to Haley, honestly, I don't remember a time where I had a problem getting in if I needed an appointment, if I went to the ER, that they didn't treat me with great respect. And just like this last time, I spent six hours there with them running every test imaginable before they decided to put me into the hospital yes, overnight sir. or for the week. Yeah. Uh, they were great. They were outstanding. Of course, then if you don't need ER, you can go over to, to our urgent care. Right. They'll shift you over there. Mm -hmm. And that's where Dr. Toronto was. This, this guy amazed me. I'm in emergency. Usually doctor walk in and they'll just say, well, what is your problem? Where do you hurt? This man walked in and he looked at me and, he, and I started to say something. He said, no, I already read your whole record before I came in here. I right. know that you had this, 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 and I know you had this, 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 and this. Now, let's see the wound. All right. I mean... It wasn't like I'm harried, I'm upset, I'm just gonna run in there and see if there's something I can put a Band-Aid on. Mm -hmm. He actually done his homework before right. he walked in. Well, that's good, that's what we want. Now, you know, our, we do have one of the busier ED departments around, and sometimes we get a little backed up, but uh, uh, we wanna make sure we take care of everybody. If you go to any hospital in this area and you go into the emergency departments, you can expect to back up. Yes, sir. And this, in my experience, was much quicker well, than that's anything good. That I've had with the outside world. Yeah, I actually track uh, how, how we flowed through the ED every morning the next oh, day. Oh, do you really? I do. I know how many people came through, how long it took them to come for, through on average, and, and if anybody left before being seen or anything, I track every one of them. We've got about a minute. Sure. What would you like to tell the vets out there? You know, we want to be your health care provider. Uh, we, we give quality health care at the hospital. Uh, we want to take care of you. Uh, you are the reason we exist. And uh, we want to make sure that, that you get that paycheck that you, that you have earned and deserve. And, uh, and I'm just privileged to be the director there at the hospital and we're gonna keep making it better and keep improving it every day, putting in new equipment, new space, uh, new clinics, uh, and expanding them for you. So thank you. And I wanna thank all the other people. I mentioned some specific people that helped me, but I want you to know that if I didn't mention you, I still praise you in my heart, and I'm so pleased you were there to help me. And I am so tickled to have you on the program. I want you to come back. Will you come back? Absolutely, Bill. Because there's a lot of other things I'd like to talk to. I've got a lot more I could talk about. I'm Bill Hodges. This is Spotlight on Government. You're unique. You're special. You're great. Tell yourself so often because you are, you know. And we'll see you on the next Spotlight on Government. And again, Joe Battle, Executive Director of the James A. Haley Health Facility. Thanks for being with me. And again, tell Karen I appreciated her help. I will, Bill. Thank you.